All right, explorers of the unknown, it's time for chapter 14. Sit back, grab a snack, and brace yourselves for a dose of cosmic wonder and earthly heartbreak. Chapter 14, Red Coast 4. Yuenji starts talking about cosmic theory, the classification of civilizations. Type 1 can use the total energy output of their planet. Type 2 can harness all the power of their star, and Type 3 can match the energy output of an entire galaxy. Sheesh, that's some mind-boggling stuff, right? But he drops the bomb. Even two Type 1 civilizations wouldn't be able to chat, because their radio signals would just be too weak. So, what hope is there for us mere Earthlings? Things start to look bleak for the scientists at the Red Coast base. Yi and her team lose hope in the existence of alien life, let alone the possibility of contact. Our mighty Red Coast base, once the beacon of hope, is no longer looking for extraterrestrial life. It's a crushing defeat, folks, as Red Coast's clearance is lifted and it diversifies into other projects. Yi's personal life takes a turn when she marries a researcher on the base. However, tragedy strikes, claiming the lives of both Commissar Lei and Yi's husband in a base accident, and shortly after, Yandong is born. The base eventually transitions to civilian use, and then, like an old ship, it is abandoned. It's a melancholic time for Yi. She reflects on the monumental personal challenges she faced in her cosmic quest, the feelings of abandonment, and the gut-wrenching insignificance that comes from realizing you might be alone in the universe. Our chapter ends on a bittersweet note, with Wang feeling a deep sense of empathy for Yi, recognizing her profound loss as he prepares to leave. It's a chapter filled with defeat, hope, and an understanding of the vast, seemingly indifferent universe. But hey, we're not alone. We have each other, and of course, our unfolding saga. Chapter 15, Three Body, Copernicus, Universal Football, and Tri-Solar Day. Our main man, Wang, is on his way home, and his mind is doing cartwheels, somersaults, the works. The events of the last two days are all tangled up like spaghetti with the Red Coast knowledge he's just gulped down. Seeking some mental tranquility, he dives headfirst into the game world of Three Body, rebranding himself as Copernicus, a nod to the revolutionary Polish astronomer. In the game, he lands smack dab in the middle of a scene straight out of Game of Thrones, a world reminiscent of a European fantasy, complete with Gothic palaces and ancient Greek attire. Once in the Great Hall, Wang meets notable figures from history, Pope Gregory, Aristotle, and Galileo. They engage in a passionate discussion, comparing and contrasting Eastern and Western approaches to knowledge. In this surreal setting, Galileo jests about the Eastern preference for meditation and epiphany, swearing by observation and experimentation for understanding the world. Wang, ready to match wits, brings up Mosey, an advocate of the same methods, only to be met with dismissive scoffs. It's time for Wang to take center stage as he presents his grand theory of the three-body problem. This world of the game revolves around not one, not two, but three suns. He envisions a cosmic football match with the three suns as players, and their planet is the football. The stable eras are periods of predictable orbits, while the chaotic eras are triggered by the disruptive gravitational pull of the other suns. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? Now, if you think the scholars responded with awe, well, no. They did what any group of self-respecting scholars would do. They laughed him off the stage. And, hold on to your hats, Pope Gregory condemns him to be burned at the stake. Overreaction much. Talk about cancel culture. Just as the flames start to lick at Wang's feet, the game world is suddenly thrown into chaos. Three suns burst into the sky, echoing Wang's vision, and the planet is torn apart in their gravitational tug of war. Just as the world collapses, a message informs Wang of the destruction of civilization 183 by a tri-solar day. Yet, in recognition of his breakthrough, he is granted access to the next level of the game. 
So, ladies and gents, in the immortal words of the Beatles, here comes the sun. Or should I say, sons. Chapter 16, The Three-Body Problem. Just as Wang is caught in the whirlwind of thoughts from his immersive game experience, he's summoned to the office of police officer Dashes, only to be met by an intriguing and eccentric math genius, Wai Cheng, who is the husband of Shen Yufei, the gal that was also playing the three-body VR game. Wai Cheng, the math genius, starts pouring out his life story. He's a guy who's so naturally talented in geometry that he sees shapes as numbers. But why? He's also plagued by laziness. He searches for meaning, for peace, and guess where he finds it? In a Buddhist monastery of all places. During his stay, he fills his mind with a captivating dance of three spheres to symbolize the chaos of his existence. Unbeknownst to him, he stumbled onto the infamous three-body problem. This mathematical conundrum has bamboozled the best minds but why thinks he's got the answer, an evolutionary algorithm? There's just one small hiccup. He needs more computing power than the monastery can offer. As Y works on this groundbreaking idea in the monastery, he encounters Shen Yufei, who takes an interest in his work and promises to aid him with computational resources. Now, here's where things take a twist. Why and Shen tie the knot, not out of love or passion, but because they share this burning desire to solve the three-body problem. Talk about an unconventional love story, but hold on tight because it gets even crazier. Why drops a bombshell. He's been receiving death threats. If he continues his research, they will kill him. However, his wife, Shen, in a plot twist worthy of a soap opera, threatens to kill him if he stops. I mean, who needs Netflix when you have this kind of drama unfolding? Our trio, Wang, Zhu, and Shi arrive at Shen's house, only to find she's been shot dead. The plot thickens, and Wai confesses about a conflict between two groups, the Adventists and Redemptionists, who want to bring a mysterious lord to Earth. Both factions have contrasting expectations on what happens next. One wants this lord to punish, humanity, while the other hopes for a happier outcome. The chapter closes with the math whiz Y entrusting Wang with his life's work. In a gesture that screams, with great power comes great responsibility. Remember, in the world of the three-body problem, the difference between a sunrise and a sunset might just be your perspective. Chapter 17, Three-Body, Newton, Von Neumann, the First Emperor, and Trisolar Syzygy. Wang Milo logs back into the VR video game, and this time it simulates a mashup of a Western Egyptian movie set. Because why not, right? I mean, who doesn't love a good cultural cocktail? Guess who's waiting for Wang in this fantastical world? None other than Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, but here's the kicker. They're not just historical figures. They're depicted as soldiers dueling over the invention of calculus. Talk about a battle of mathematical proportions. Newton is all like, with calculus, we can solve the three-body problem easy peasy. But then, von Neumann, this random third guy, goes all buzzkill, nah mate, not so fast. Wang suggests using a computer. Newton stares at him like he's grown a second head because, well, it's the past and computers haven't been invented yet. Von Neumann, who Wang figures out is a real player, not some AI. Construct says, how about a human computer? Let's pitch this to the Emperor Kin. You know, because when you have a crazy idea, it's always best to pitch it to the guy in charge of beheadings. Our trio, Newton, Von Neumann, and Wang, waltz into the palace to meet Emperor Kin. They put together a demonstration of the human computer. Von Neumann starts by labeling three soldiers, input one, input two, and output, just like a basic circuit. But instead of electricity, they've got flags. Black for zero, white for one, binary coding, baby. This makeshift computer starts doing computations, and the game's time accelerates. Suddenly, we've got a football field of human circuitry. They make a huge motherboard, aptly named Kin 1.0. Now, there's a problem, and it's not just any problem, it's a big one. 
just when everything seems to be going well. There's a glitch in the human matrix, and Emperor Kin orders the faulty components to be executed. Ouch, talk about a hard reboot. But let's not dwell on the details, because after a bit of tinkering, they get the motherboard working again. The human computer gets to work, performing calculations for a whopping 16 months. They predict the dawn of a stable era, but hold on, because the joy is short-lived. They soon discover that a tri-solar syzygy is approaching. Gravity starts to diminish, and everything starts to float apart. The game planet and its inhabitants morph into amorphous blobs. It's like watching a surreal Salvador Dali painting come to life. Civilization number 184, like all the ones prior, gets wiped out. Wang, witnessing this cataclysm, decides it's time to log off. But just when he thought he was out, he receives a call from a game administrator. They're asking for his personal information, and to top it off, they invite Wang to a meetup for game players. Curiosity level over 9,000. Will Wang unravel the mysteries behind this virtual realm? What awaits him at the game player meetup? Join us in the next exhilarating chapter where reality and the game blur even further. Until then, game on and keep that sense of wonder burning bright. If you've traveled with me this far into the video, I'd be thrilled if you'd consider giving me a pat on the back with the like button. But if this journey didn't quite do it for you, don't fret, maybe our next adventure will. Subscribing is your passport to join me as we explore more exciting chapters in the vast landscape of books. Help shape the future by leaving a comment with book recommendations for chapter summaries or feedback to enhance the channel.